tape, putting it together, the tape holding it together still. <laughs> so this is Sam Ferris, I'm a photographer from Sydney, Australia. I work full time as a high school teacher, but in every spare moment I'm on the street shooting. Uh, it's been my love for the last 10 to 13 years. Um, hundreds of thousands of photos later, I've got a few ones that I don't hate and uh, I'll keep doing it until I kind of fall over, I guess. <laughs> In 2010, I started to take it fairly seriously. Brought a camera with me and sort of took photos on daily kind of walks and everything like that. And then um, found the genre of street photography. And that led me into like a whole new world of discoveries and looking at other people's work. And when I started putting photos online myself, I started getting comments like, oh, this is great street photography, whatever. I didn't really know what that meant, so I started researching and looking online and looking at what the genre was. And I found Cardia Bresson looking at his work and, and discovered Magnum. Found Alex Webb and Trent Park around the same time and, and was able to use space and colour and shapes and light in an incredible way and shooting it on a film camera with Kodachrome and still able to kind of freeze time perfectly and separate and create these layers and it was really impressive so I saw similarities in the way Sydney looked in terms of the light and colour so I saw the exhibition and uh, was inspired by that the suffering of light book and everything was one of my first photo books um, and then Trent Park and Narelle like uh, Narelle Audio um, two photographers who kind of it's hard to see Sydney without thinking of their work to realise there was a Magnum photographer from the city that I was in and kind of same feelings and emotions that I had early on when I was living here. dad was a painter so I tried a bit of that wasn't very good at it um, but the scenes that he kind of paint and look for you almost like box them in that genre of kind of photography or urban life or whatever it is like um, drive around with him as a little kid and he'd have a SLR camera and take photos of scenes that he'd see for paintings I went through some of those photos recently, they're, they're basically street photos, like you'd have someone walking through the scene for scale and the composition would be something that I'd look for as well. So I guess early on I was drawn to that type of photography because it reminded me of like, I don't know, growing up in a house full of his artwork and wanting to kind of be part of that and emulate what he did. I think because the camera was there, like we just had it as a camera. At, I just had it as a camera at home. Like I think someone gave it to me as a present or something, and just sitting there doing nothing. Um, so we like moved to Sydney, and then just started walking around. And this was before camera phones, so I'd bring the, um, the little Canon camera with me and take photos on the way because it was all new. It was all exciting like hadn't really explored this part of the world or anything like that. I remember one photo that I really liked early on that I took was like a bit of architecture and it's kind of cool but the thing that made it more interesting was there was a little cat wandering upon the roof and it created like a little silhouette of a cat and you can't really repeat that moment like I could essentially go there every day and take the same photo of the architecture but to get the cat like in the right spot and so that became the challenge, like to shoot in public space, like shoot people, um, balance it against the background, kind of looking for 
interesting situations or mm. kind of stuff that you might miss if you didn't look. So yeah, same negative, but this is black and white, and this is secret. <laughs> Street photography was very a demo, very democratic form of photography. So there's no real gatekeepers. There's no one to stop you if you have a camera and you want to get out on the street and do do photography. Like you can instantly kind of jump into street photography and start doing it. There's no barrier like you grab your iPhone or your phone or whatever and yeah. get out there today and take great shots if your work is good then it gets noticed kind of a pleasing thing early on to see that there was this really passionate community behind street photography it became addicting I guess like wanting to get out and, and do better and make better work and fix the mistakes and take a better photo and make something interesting make something that represented me and something that I guess, yeah, spoke, speaks to me. Because it's democratic, like there's no real governing body or anything like that. There's a few people who like are self-appointed, like thinking they kind of know things and should set the rules for others. But in the end, it's what you impose upon yourself. It's, it's sort of the ultimate kind of, um, ultimate kind of artistic practice where the limitations are, are yours alone. Like. For a lot of people, street photography is not like a particular visual um, style or aesthetic. It's more sort of a mood or emotion. Yeah, yeah. And um, street photography can be anywhere. It doesn't have to be on a street. It can be on a beach, on a train station. Um, it can be at a festival or event. Uh, it's more sort of the the, uh, the emotion and the kind of ambience or the mood of the photo that really sets it up as street and photos to be candid so I don't set anything up, don't arrange anything, don't ask anyone to pose, don't really talk or interact with anyone, uh, that it's shot in a public place mm. so anyone can access the same space, it's not something I have a domain over or um, not something that I have an exclusive right to and that the photos feature essentially strangers so but they're not people I know or um, are friendly with that you don't have that implied kind of uh, consent and comfortability with taking their photo. It's more sort of featuring people um, out in the world. It's the guy I was telling you about with the parrot who's always around. He knows me. That's okay. <laughs> uh, about a hundred photos of him. <laughs> it's a big parrot too. Yeah, yeah, it's beautiful. I think a lot of it's subconscious sometimes, like people are drawn to things and they don't know why yeah. and it's only after you kind of look at the photos later and they start speaking to you in that way like oh wow I've got a lot of photos of this particular subject or idea and um, and you realize oh that's maybe a theme or a, something there in, in your work that you subconsciously are drawn to and maybe there's a reason for that or uh, maybe there's not and um, for me like yeah, I think, I think ephemeral kind of things, I'm always photographing them, like things that are there one moment and gone the next. Um, lots of photos, if you look at my work, like lots of photos of um, flowers, cigarettes, uh, like particular light that's only there for a few minutes and then gone. Uh, reflections, a good photo is something that can't be repeated. You can't go to the same place, same time you're not going to get the same thing so yeah triggers for me the light be the first one that I'm always drawn to like you see the good light or see the patch of light or the uh, particular times of day I always want to get out and take photos I'm always drawn to that it's, it heightens everything it creates this kind of dramatic 
effect on people, on buildings, on everything around. Um, the things that are, that are short-lasting and uh, maybe symbolic of a lot of ways of uh, darkness, death, um, and all these existential sort of things come up when you're shooting and editing the work. So it's, uh, even though it's beautiful, it's, it's quickly fading, quickly gone. I used to get ang like really bad kind of nerves, anxiety when I first did it and I had to build myself up to it. Like I had to really like pump myself up before going shooting. It sounds a bit silly, but um, it was a big deal to kind of be out in a public space and feel exposed and have a camera and think that, oh, maybe someone's gonna have a problem with this or I need to be careful about what I'm doing. And I think just the more you, do it the more comfortable it becomes like anything like eventually you realize that no one really has a problem with it like it's a very very small minority that notice what you're doing and then even smaller who are going to say something or question it and I've had like various kind of things over the years and like uh, if you counted the hours that I was out cheating would be such a fraction of time the amount of time that I've had in confrontation and or in conversation with someone who's curious about what I'm doing and usually like they're satisfied with kind of the answer that oh, I'm just a photog just a photographer taking photos love this beautiful light and thought the scene looked really good or that's that kind of thing and people are pretty satisfied with that because they can see what you're talking about immediately they can see oh yeah this is actually like a really nice time of day or whatever and I didn't notice that before. Yeah, other times it's kind of been the people watching from afar, like watching what you're doing and kind of getting a bit of a, no, feeling like they have to be a bit of a hero and <laughs> run in and save the day. And like, that's been, they're probably the worst ones. The ones who kind of observe and like, think, oh, that person's doing something wrong. I better say something. And usually once they've made their mind up and are ready to confront you there's no going back you're not going to calm anyone down you're not going to talk them off the ledge no matter kind of what you do and i learned that pretty early on in the end walking away was the best thing to do and that's usually what i do these days like if something starts a confrontation i think my time's too valuable to spend it arguing with someone who's not going to see reason it's uh, better just to walk away and try and uh, get over it and spend the time making photos rather than justify myself. Like, uh, no, the parrot. The parrot. Did you see the parrot? No. Just down there. Yeah, I did camera. It's got a big parrot. Normally that guy's pretty nice.